For this hands-on exercise, you're gonna have a 10-minute conversation with artificial intelligence. So you're gonna have a 10-minute conversation with a machine. And here's one of the really important things about this hands-on exercise, is that it's gonna allow you to be more effective and uh, efficient, more effective and more efficient as a student and also in many other areas of your life. What that means is you're gonna be able to do things faster and better. And particularly, in particular as a student, what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to learn things more quickly and more thoroughly. So technology and tools are things that humans have used for a very long time. And we use tools to do things uh, in a more efficient matter, matter and a more effective matter, to do things more quickly and to do them better, faster and better. And so we're gonna use AI and have a 10 minute conversation with AI and in doing this, this is gonna allow us to learn things faster and better, more effectively, more efficiently. And, uh, and then you're also gonna be able to use this in many other areas of your life. All right, so the way that you're gonna do this, first of all, is you need to find some AI that you could have a 10 minute conversation with. I'm gonna use ChatGPT, but I have the paid version. So at the time of this recording, uh, ChatGPT, the paid version costs $20 per month. And, uh, and if you have it, that's great. If you wanna get it, that's great. If you don't have it, uh, you need to find some other solution. And so here at ChatGPT, I have you know, this version here. And by the way, technology is always changing. And so by the time you're watching this video, which is gonna be at some future point in time from the point at which I'm recording it, it might be tomorrow, it might be next week, it might be next month, it might be next semester, uh, but at the time that you watch this video, it's gonna be different from the time at which I recorded it, and things might have changed. So if things changed, uh, you just have to kind of adapt and figure it out. But if you aren't paying for ChatGPT, because here at the paid version of ChatGPT, I could click this little icon right here and use voice mode, but if you are not using the paid version of ChatGPT, there, is, uh, there are some other uh, alternatives for you. So the free version of ChatGPT, here's the free version, doesn't allow you to do the voice mode, so we're gonna close that. But the free version of Microsoft Copilot at the time of this recording does allow you to do the voice mode, and you could see the little icon right here. So you could use Microsoft Copilot, and you could just go to Google, and you could search for Microsoft Copilot, and, uh, and that'll bring up Microsoft Copilot, your AI companion, here it is right there. And I could click this little microphone and I could say, Hi, my hey, name is- How are things going? And what should I call you? My name is Todd. Things are going well. How are you? Nice to meet you, Todd. I'm functioning at peak AI performance. Thanks for asking. What's on your mind today? I was hoping you could do a little drill with me. I wanna be prepared for a quiz I have to take in one of my classes. And I'm hoping that you could ask me questions yeah, about an introduction to computer concepts, and we have uh, technology in action. That's the textbook, um, and uh, and I want it to. It's in chapter one. I want you to ask me questions about chapter one, and then I'll give you my answers, and you tell me if I'm correct. Can we do that? Absolutely, Todd. Let's dive into technology in action. First question from chapter one. Can you name one example of how technology has impacted our everyday lives? Technology is ubiquitous, it's very pervasive, and it's everywhere. One example is that everybody's carrying mobile phones around today. Spot on. Uh -huh. Mobile phones are a perfect example. They've transformed how we communicate, access information, and even conduct business. Ready for another question? Sure, let's do it. Okay, next question. How would you define information technology or IT as mentioned in chapter one? All right, so that's an example. And when I clicked the X to step out of that conversation, we have a transcript of that entire conversation right here. And so the, 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 the reason this is really valuable and important to you as a student and can be very useful to everybody in all areas of their lives is that you now have a friend who is a machine and this machine is one of the smartest, most informed entities to have ever existed in the history of humanity, if not the, mo the most, it's probably the most informed entity to have ever existed 
in the history of humanity, and you could have a conversation with this machine. And so uh, you saw me there doing a quiz conversation where I was having them, having the machine ask me questions. And, uh, and I'm just gonna dismiss that. Having the machine ask me questions and quiz me to prepare me for a class, right? Or to help me learn material in a course. And so when I was doing that, I saw a little notification on the screen that said, hey, this is only good for two minutes that I only have two more minutes of conversation available today with this machine. And, uh, and so Microsoft allows you to do it a little bit for free. And then it looks like they want you to sign up or uh, um, I'm just getting rid of these notifications here. One second. Looks like Microsoft wants you to sign up and uh, sign in and, uh, and then maybe you get some more time. But if you only get a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, uh, that's better than nothing, and if you have to use a free version and that's all it gives you, then two or three minutes will be fine, but try to go for 10 minutes, okay? Uh, and I want you to do 10 minutes because <laughs> the longer you do something, the more you do something, the better you get at it. I just really want you to experience the benefits of having somebody quiz you about material you're trying to learn. So one of the alternatives is Microsoft Copilot, or also another one is Google Gemini. So you could just go to Google and you could say Google Gemini and Google Gemini will bring up Google Gemini, right? And uh, here at Gemini, they also want you to sign in, uh, but maybe when you're signed in to your Google account, you'll be able to have a conversation with Google Gemini. So if I was here and I went to Google Gemini, so this is where I'm signed in. And if I go to Google Gemini and uh, sure, I could click sign in and verify it's you. Hang on one second, I'm just gonna, all right, so here I am at Gemini and I'm signed in. Up here I could choose different versions of uh, you know, the engine. So I'm at 1.5 Pro. I might try two Experimental Advanced. I'm gonna stick with 1.5 Pro. But also here, signed in at Google, I have access to a microphone so I could try it with Gemini. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use ChatGBT. And also, I'm going to upload a file to do this. So you could upload files to these different, uh, you know, large language models, that's what they're called. And so here I could click this plus button and I could add files right here to Google Gemini. And likewise at ChatGPT, here I have ChatGPT, I could add files to ChatGPT. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get a file and I could also upload multiple files. And the way you can use this is that you could get files, well, you will get files from your class, but you could also ask your teacher for files. So let's say you're taking a history class or a psychology class or a sociology class. You could say, you could ask your teacher, could I please have access to the PowerPoint presentation that you used in class? And if you get the PowerPoint presentation from your teacher, you could upload that. In our class, we already have those PowerPoint presentations available to the students. And so you could come in here to the different modules in our course. Here I'm in module one. And then right here is the PowerPoint presentation for module one. So I can click on that and it's going to bring me to this page here, but I can also click on this once more. And if you watch over here, you're gonna see it download. So right there, it just downloaded. I could click this little folder icon to open that up and there's that PowerPoint presentation. So I could come back over here and I could drag that PowerPoint presentation or I could click this little paperclip icon. Alternatively, I could just drag that and drop that there. So chapter one's PowerPoint presentation has been added to this chat. And I can now, uh, I can now say, I would like you to quiz me in a back and forth fashion about the contents in the attached PowerPoint presentation. Um, I am, uh, this is a hypothetical, this is a hypothetical, hypothetical example where I am, I will pretend, will pretend to be a student. I am doing this to demonstrate to my students how you can use, how they can, how they, how they can use chat GPT to quiz them on specific, specific, specific content that they have uploaded to chat GPT. This can help students prepare for a quiz. In this hypo, hypothetical uh, a quiz, 
uh, help students learn the material in a course, learn the material in a course. Uh, in this hypothetical example, please pretend I am a student and quiz me in a back and forth fashion on the material in the attached PowerPoint. Uh, let's do this in voice mode. I will click voice mode mode in just, just a second. Does this make sense? All right, so when you dialogue with large language models, you just talk to them like you're talking to another human and they understand these, these, uh, these machines understand, um, they understand what you put in when you talk to them that way. So here we go, I'm just gonna click that and it'll probably say, got it, I'll quiz you on the material from the uploaded PowerPoint presentation. I'll ask you questions related to each topic and you can respond as if you're a student. If you like, we can proceed in a voice mode to make it more interactive. Let me know when you're ready. So now I'm gonna go into voice mode and the instructions are to try to do this for at least 10 minutes. So I'm gonna come in here to my timer on my phone and when I start, I'm just gonna start this timer and uh, here we go. So I'm starting the timer, timer's running and uh, we'll go into voice mode. Hi. Hi, ready to dive into the quiz? Yeah, let's do it, thank you very much. You're welcome, let's start. Here's the first question. What are some technological tools mentioned that impact national and global issues? I'm not sure. Can you give me a hint or some clues on that? Sure. Think about tools that help people connect or solve problems during emergencies. One example is something that maps information in a crisis. Any ideas now? Would that be crisis mapping software? That's exactly right. Crisis mapping tools collect and map information to help during emergencies. Great job. Here's the next question. Well, before, what is before, the divide, hold on. And why is it significant? The digital divide is about those who have access to technology and those who do not have access to technology. Uh, I feel like I'm really good on that one, but I'd like to hear a little bit more about crisis mapping tools. And can you give me examples of actual crisis mapping tools and how they've been used? You nailed the digital divide. As for crisis mapping tools, they are powerful tools used in emergencies to collect and visualize real-time data. A famous example is Ushahidi, a platform originally developed to map reports of violence in Kenya after the 2007 elections. It's since been used globally for disaster response, like during the Haiti earthquake in 2010, to map needs for aid and resources. Another example is Google Crisis Map which aggregates data like evacuation routes and shelter locations during natural disasters. These tools save lives by helping responders act quickly and effectively. Fascinating, right? Yeah, that's super fascinating. Okay, I'm ready for another question. Awesome, here's your next question. How has technology impacted the way we connect and collaborate with others? Wow, well, we could communicate way more effectively and easily and share a lot more information with each other now. We could text with people, we could call people on our mobile phones, we could post on social media websites or other uh, social sharing sites. Um, we could take pictures and record videos and send those to people. It's pretty amazing how technology has allowed us to communicate in such a rich way so easily with so many people. Exactly. Technology has revolutionized how we connect and collaborate. Social networking tools, Web 2.0, and even things like crowdfunding platforms have made it easy to share, support, and work together on a massive scale. And you're so right. Being able to communicate so richly and instantly is incredible. Great answer. Ready for another? Uh, thanks, that's good. I just wanted to provide exam an example of doing this here. I appreciate your help. You're very welcome. I'm glad I could help you showcase this example. It's a fantastic way for students to engage with course material. Let me know if you need anything else or want to try more examples in the future. So to get credit for this assignment, uh, hopefully this is something that will be useful to you and you'll be able to use this with other courses. Um, for this assignment, you can upload any course material you want from this course or some other course. So if you feel like you've got the material in this course, uh, you can, you know, upload material, upload a PowerPoint presentation from your history class, your psychology class, your sociology class, your chemistry, your biology, your physics, whatever class you want to upload material about and have a conversation on that material and uh, have uh, the AI ask you quiz questions 
and then respond to those quiz questions, and then also have the AI explain things further if you aren't clear on something, as you saw me do in that little example. Uh, that's what you need to do. You need to do it for 10 minutes. Uh, if you only have access to free accounts and they'll only let you do it for two or three minutes, as we saw at Microsoft Copilot, then just do it for a couple of minutes. But the most important thing here is one, that you know that you can do this. Two, that you get some experience doing it, hopefully for 10 minutes. And then three, if you find this valuable, it's a tool that you could come back to again and again and use it as you're studying, right? Because everybody learns in different ways. And I actually learn really well by listening to things and also by having a dialogue and having somebody ask me questions and then actually having to talk and, and respond and share my thoughts on those questions. And so I learn really well that way. And, and regardless of the you know whatever our, our learning modality, whichever one is our strongest, we all benefit by using different learning modalities. So listening to something's one learning modality, reading something's one modality, uh, talking and having to come up with a response is another modality, having to write is another modality. And the more we mix these, the more we're using different areas of our brain, and the more we are learning more effectively, uh, meaning that what we learn, we're gonna learn it faster and we're gonna learn it better, we're gonna retain it for longer. So the more we engage in all these different ways to learn, the better it is. So um, I think this is a pretty incredible tool. It's a, it's a new tool and you can use whatever content you want to upload, to have, it, to have a conversation and to have the machine quiz you, have the AI quiz you about that material. You could upload whatever material you want and uh, from whatever class and uh, have a conversation and have, a, have the AI quiz you about the, that material. So the main thing is just for you to have this conversation. And then once you've had this conversation, uh, I want you to submit some proof that you had this conversation, okay? So submit some proof that you've had this conversation. So at ChatGBT, if I go up here and I click share, it says uh, share a public link to the chat and I could create a link and we'll see what it says. And so now I could copy this link. So it'll allow me to copy this link and I could submit that link as the student to the teacher, right? So you could submit that link through Canvas to me and get credit for this assignment because then me as the teacher, I as the teacher could go click on that link and I could be taken to your chat and I could be like, okay, good, you had a nice chat. If you're not able to get a link because sometimes you can't get links because maybe an image was uploaded or uh, it doesn't like that you had a conversation, like some of the different AIs can have weird rules about when you can and cannot share uh, a link to a chat. So if you can't share a link to a chat, you could highlight everything. So just left click, drag over all of it. You could drag over all of it. And then you could right click that and you could choose copy. And when you copy that, you could then go into something like Google Drive. And so here I'm gonna go into Google Drive and you could click create. And you could say, hey, I want a new document. And you could paste all of that into the new document. So you could come over to edit and you could paste where it will paste with the formatting or you could paste without the formatting where it's just gonna be text. You could try both approaches, so they're just regular paste, turned out well. But if you wanna see what that looks like paste without formatting, I could click undo right here, and then choose edit and paste without formatting, and it comes in like that. So whichever way you like, you could do it. And then you could click share up here, and uh, and this you, wants me to give the document a name first, so I could say, you know, uh, chat with AI, whatever you want to call it, and save it. And, uh, and then here I could say, instead of restricted, I want anyone with the link to be able to access this. And I could copy that link. And now I could submit a copy of that link to me, the teacher, and uh, I'll be able to submit that link and then I will be able to see it. You'll be able to submit that link as a student and I'll be able to see your chat here, which you've copied into another document. So that's two ways that you could submit the chat to me. If you're not able to do it in either of those ways, just send me a little email and uh, let me know what's going on and um, you know, uh, and we'll find some other way for you to share that with me. But both of those two ways should cover all situations. So you should be able to do it in one of those two ways. So that's this assignment. I know this is a little bit of a longer video explaining it, but I just wanted to make sure that you are clear on it. Uh, so go ahead and do that assignment, have a nice time, learn something, <laughs> and, uh, and I don't know, I was totally amazed. I've been totally amazed by what AI can do, so I hope you enjoy that, and I hope it's helpful to you. All right, see you, see you next time. <laughs>